One of these three ladies has estimated the worth of the jewelry you are about to see at over one million dollars. What is your name, please? My name is Gerda Scheidenfisch, and this is a diamond pendant on a platinum chain. The stone in the center weighs 107 carats. I value the pendant at $350,000. My name is Gerda Scheidenfisch, and these are emeralds and diamond anklets originally worn by a favorite dancing girl of uh, Indian Maharaja. They were made in 14th century, and I value them at $195,000. My name is Gerda Scheidenfisch, and this is a diamond necklace created for a member of one of the royal houses in Europe. It consists of um, 182 diamonds with a total of 192 carats. I value it at $475,000. Only one of these ladies is the real Gerda Scheidenfish. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, moderator of London's version of What's My Line, Eamon Andrews, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Anison, the headache remedy with a special combination of ingredients to relieve pain, fight depression, calm jittery nerves. Anison. Good evening, panel. Good, Good evening, evening Bud. Eamon, a warm welcome back to you. It's been a long time since you visited us. Quite a few years. Delighted to be back again. Too but... many years. <laughs> Glad you're back for a little vacation trip? Yes, sir. Uh, going over the coast and down further south and get some sunshine. God. Say, Bud, yes. uh, you know about these things. What's the rule against uh, using a, a show like this to, to give a personal hello to anybody? Oh, it's an absolute uh, hard and fast rule. You can. No, no communication that way, directly. Well, what if, for instance, anyone. if we wanted to say hello to Arlene and and uh, get well quick and all that stuff. How would we Arlene go about it? Yeah. Yeah, you can't. There's no way of saying, uh, dear Arlene, we're sorry you're ill, and hurry up and get well, and uh, we're rooting for you. Can't say it. Can't well, say that's it. That's what sorry. we wanted to do. I'd <laughs> like to, but we can't. All right. Open your envelopes now that we've broken the law, and take out your affidavit cards and follow along as I read. I, Gerda Scheidenfish, am a gemologist an expert in judging the quality and value of diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and other precious stones. At present, I am specializing in diamonds for an international jewelry firm. During the course of a single day, through my hands pass diamonds weighing over 1,000 carats and costing over $300,000. Signed, Gerda Scheidenfish. <laughs> I think it's only fair to remind you, panel, and everyone watching our show, that although two of these charming ladies are actually imposters, all of these pieces of jewelry are genuine. And that's the reason for our two Pinkerton guards. Now, these three ladies all claim to be, as you heard, Gerda Scheidenfish, gemologist, and we start this questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. I can hardly take my eyes off the jewelry. Uh, number one, what color is the Hope Diamond? The Hope Diamond is blue. Thank you. Number two, where are most diamonds cut? Oh, mostly in Amsterdam. Thank you. Right. Uh, number three, what is the smallest carat of diamond that is used as a ring? Uh, number one, can you tell me? It depends on the shape. Thank you. Uh, number two, when you cut a diamond, how long does it take you to cut a large one? Oh, it can take years. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number three, do you do anything before you start to cut the diamond? Yes, you have to um, polish it. Uh, it has, uh, it comes from a rock. Thank you. Uh, uh, number one. Tom Poston. Oh, it's my, my turn. Thank you. Uh, 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 let me ask you. Number three, do you know uh, a man named Henry Pommier? No. Number two, do you know? Maybe I should say before I start that this man well, do you know number one? Do you know a man named Henry Pommier? I didn't meet the person. Do you know who, do you know who I mean, though? No? It was mentioned. 
Pardon me? It was mentioned, yes. Uh, thank you. Number two, uh, uh, do cartels exist in uh, the diamond uh, industry? Do what? Cartels. Cartels. Do you know what I'm talking about, number one? No, I don't know. Number three, do you know what a cartel is? No. Oh. Peggy. Thank you, bud. And number two, do you know where the shop Bulgari is? In what city? Bulgari, the jeweler. Do you know number three? No. Number one? No, I don't know. Uh, do you, uh, what is the name of the family that owns De Beers, number two? Excuse me, you mentioned... De Beers. De Beers. Yes. Uh, what is the name of the family that owns De Beers? Well, uh, De Beers uh, is uh, managed by Oppenheimer. Thank you. Uh, number one... Oh, is that my turn gone? Yes. Oh. <laughs> number one, what is the last process in preparing a diamond? After cutting the diamond? Mm-hmm. To put the facets on. I see. Number two, what would you say is the last process? Polishing. Polishing. Do you know where Hatton Garden is? Pardon? Hatton Garden, H-A-T-T-O-N. Mm -hmm. Number three, do you know where Hatton Garden is? No, but it sounds English. Sounds English. <laughs> Number one, do you know where Hatton Garden is? No, I don't know. Number one, did you ever hear of the Koh Yes, I do. What was it? It was a large diamond. A large diamond, yeah. That's yeah. all the time we have. Whatever information we have managed to glean, we have to work on now. And mark your balance, if you will, please, at once, without change. And, of course, as usual, no consultation. As you vote now for number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will be awarded $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked, panel? Very well, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number one. She seemed to have heard of uh, Cormier, at least. And he works over at uh, Winston's. And he's, uh, besides being a very nice fellow, he's uh, kind of a famous uh, jeweler in his own right. So I thought maybe it might be number one. Peggy. Well, I voted for number two. Well, she's wearing more jewelry than the others, which shows an affinity <laughs> for it. And so I voted for her. I don't know anything about diamonds. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> Eamon, what is your choice? Neither do I. I voted for number two because you had so much assurance about what you had to say and because you said the last process was polishing the diamond, which I think it is. And Kitty. Well, I voted for number one. Generally, the panel fools me, and I believe that Pommier was real, and it turns out he is real. And you know, diamonds for a woman is a very serious business. And number one looked the most serious of them all. All right, there we have it. Split down the middle here. Two for one and two for two. Let's see how we go now as we learn which one of these ladies actually is the so-called gemologist. So will the real Gerda Scheidenfish please stand up? Thank you very much. The two uh, flanking ends here of the, of the panel, the ones that got that one right. Just to set the record straight, the real Gerda Scheidenfish is a gemologist working exclusively with diamonds for the jewelry firm of Harry Winston. Oh, oh we did. Yeah. Of New York, Geneva, and Paris. And all of the jewelry displayed here tonight, as a matter of fact, is owned by Mr. Winston. And are all those prices real? Yes, yeah. No, that's only her estimate. <laughs> They'll be higher when they get the markup. That's called the make you an offer. <laughs> <laughs> Number uh, two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Nina Leitl and I'm director of the International Department of Plaza Hotel in New York City. Thank you. And uh, number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Kirsten Smith and I'm a landscape gardener and a painter. <laughs> It was a great joy having you here and checking up the score. You did all right. There were two incorrect votes, and that gives you a total, ladies, of $250 each of $500 that you take away with you, along with our sincere thanks. That comes to you by way of Anison, of course, as well as the gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Anison. Thank you so much for being with us, and hope you had a good time. Good night, and God bless you. Panel, as an introduction to our next team of challengers, let's take a look at a short scene from the upcoming motion picture, The Caretaker, starring Joan Crawford. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. As you can see, size or brute strength mean absolutely nothing against judo. 
Now, that demonstration of judo that Miss Crawford just executed was taught to her by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Bruce Tegnier. My name is Bruce Tegnier. My name is Bruce Tegnier. Will you follow along, panel, please, with your copies of this affidavit? I, Bruce Tegnier, own and operate a school where I teach four basic arts of unarmed self-defense. Judo, karate, aikido, and savat. My techniques have been adopted by the United States Army, the Marine Corps, and by police academies in major cities throughout the country. I hold a black belt in both judo and karate. As well as Miss Joan Crawford, my school boasts such well-known pupils as Julie Newmar, Robert Taylor, Mamie Van Doren, and Bob Hope. Signed, Bruce Tegnier. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim, as you heard, to be the same one. By name, Bruce Tegnier, by occupation, judo and karate instructor. And may we start this cross-examination with our most welcome visitor from London, England, Eamon Andrews. I'm not going to shake hands with anyone here tonight. <laughs> Number one, uh, when you start teaching someone who knows nothing about judo, what is the first thing you teach them? On the judo, we usually start with the throws and falls, unless it's for self-defense. Number two, uh, according to judo expertise, where does strength come from? Well, strength comes from balance. Number three, where do you say strength comes from in judo? From the mind. From the mind. Number one, where do you say strength comes from? In judo, you don't need strength. Oh, yes, you do. I bet you do. <laughs> Number two, would you back yourself now as a judo expert with a black belt against Sonny Liston? Any day. Any day. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. Number three, is there any uh, limit on the size that a small person could be against a big person and still win in judo? Yes. There is a limit. Uh, number two, do you believe that? Not really. It's difficult. Now, to number one, in, in karate, it's the, it's the blow, right? Yes. And in judo, it's the turning over, tumbling business. Number two, what is it in savat? What is the main thing? Well, savat is, is using the feet. Oh, more than thank me. you. And number three, in uh, Aikido, what is it? What is Tom Poston? <laughs> I'd like to find out a little bit about Aikido. Could you tell us number three answers? Uh, yes. Uh, Aikido is, actually means um, meeting of the mind. That's the literal translation. Uh, you really just touch and hold somebody, perhaps breaking a bone, but it's not a killing sport at all. Ooh. That's a break. I mean, that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, uh, number two, how do you feel about the big man being better than the little man? What about both? if both of them are trained in, uh, in unarmed combat? Then does the big man stand a better chance than the little man? The better man number, What did I say number two? Chance. I mean number one. Oh. I'm sorry. Number one. Uh, uh, number uh, <laughs> Uh, Peggy. Speaking, Me. A good big man is always better than a good small man. Peggy Number Gass. one, where did karate start? Which country? Which number? Number one. Number oh, one? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, actually, it started in Tibet, China, originally, and it was the, uh, the, all the oriental countries that uh, developed it. N number two, can a girl get a black belt? I'm sorry, would you... Can a girl win a black belt? Oh, yes, indeed. At number, number three, there's a Hollywood columnist who owns a black belt. Who's that? A female? No, a, a man. Uh, uh, Ricky Nelson has a black belt. But... Well, he's not a colonel. <laughs> <laughs> well, our time is gone. That's it. So whatever holds you may have learned, you better use them now on your ballot. Mark your ballots at once, panel, if you will, without change and no consultation allowed as you mark. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number one. Uh, uh, I, I don't think... I, I, I don't think anybody ought to say that they would go up against Sonny Liston like, uh, with no qualms at all, because his mind looks awfully tough to me, and I think he could really nail you with that. <laughs> and, uh, 
Uh, n number three uh, looked a little bit out of shape. Of course, you can't always tell by that. <laughs> Peggy Cass, what's your vote? Well, I voted for number one. Although I always thought karate started in Korea. But the thing is, when he said you don't need any strength for judo, that sold me because you'll always see pictures of little old ladies flooring 300-pound <laughs> men. So I thought it must be him. And, uh, he. Amos, it must he. be he. I voted for number two. I was torn between number one and two. It was two who said he'd go up against could Liston, be torn. not one. Yes, be torn indeed. But I thought all strength came from the ground in judo. And, uh, number one and three didn't say this, and he could prevaricate. Number two. Kitty. <laughs> I voted for number two. He's got a very stern, steady look in his eye, and I think he could teach anybody to do anything. All right, here we have it. Then again, a split vote of two for one and two for two. Let's check it immediately before we lose courage and find out who's right and who's wrong. In other words, which of these gentlemen actually is the expert and instructor in judo and karate? Will the real Bruce Tegnier please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Incidentally, for your record, in case you want to study anything, Bruce Tegnier has written 12 books on judo and karate. And his latest one is entitled The Complete Book of Self-Defense. What more could you ask? <laughs> Number two, may we have your real name and what you really do? My name is Peter Pratt. I manufacture, market, and sell a line of products called Peter Pratt Products, one of which is a gold-plated nail and other novels. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Number three, what is your real name, sir, and what do you do? My name is Mel Reisman, and I report ski information, among other things, for Bromley, Vermont. <laughs> Gentlemen, we check the score. And along with the good time we hope you had, you also will take away the total that comes for two incorrect votes at $250 each, another $500 going your way tonight from Anison, and of course a gift package of the fine products from Anison too. And I thanks to you. If you had a good time, then it's more than made up for any difference you might have weighed between that and a thousand. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> May I present our third team of challengers? What is your name, please? My name is Esther Mann. My name is Esther Mann. My name is Esther Mann. Very well, panel, will you follow along with your copies while I read you from mine on this affidavit? I, Esther Mann, am the founder and president of an organization called TOPS, which stands for Take Off Pounds Sensibly. First, each member consults a doctor who recommends an individual diet. Then we have weekly meetings where all the members weigh in and join in a sing-along with tops. Any member who is tempted to sneak in an extra portion of dessert can call another tops member and keep talking until the desire has passed away. <laughs> we estimate that in 1962, our 44,000 tops members lost more than 300,000 pounds. Signed, Esther Mance. There are three ladies all claiming to be Esther Mance, founder and president of Tops. And we'll start this one with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Number one, where do you go to join? <laughs> <laughs> we go to the, where we have our meetings at the, each night. Thank you. Uh, number two, uh, say you're really dying for a piece of pie. Does a member come speeding to your house and take it out of the refrigerator and say no? <laughs> well, that's what he ought to do. But what we have to do is telephone our friends when something like that happens. And you say, spit out those peanuts, baby. <laughs> 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 what do you sing when you... Number three, what, what is the little song you sing when you sing along with tops? We have hundreds. Oh, thank you. Number, number one, what do you do to backsliders? Like if you, if you weigh in five pounds heavier? What we give them extra duties to do at the meetings. And sometimes we even uh, make them do uh, little chores and things. I see. Amen. She didn't mean backsliders. Number two, <laughs> what happens if you can't sing? Well, uh, they have to listen to you anyway. <laughs> they have to listen to you anyway. Number three, when was uh, this organization founded? Fifteen years ago. Fifty years ago? Fifteen. Fifteen. 
What is the average amount of weight that a member of the organization loses in one year? That very... What would the average be? Number two, what would you say the average is? 30 pounds. 30? Mm -hmm. Number one, what would you say the average is? I'd say the average is right up about 40 or 45. Pounds? Kitty. Uh, I, I don't want to be personal, but did, did you ever have a real uh, weight problem, number two? You bet I did. I lost 75 pounds. Wow. Is and that I'm how you got into it? Well, uh, no, that's how uh, I began it. Ah. And uh, I still have a little way to go. Thank you. Number three, how much, how many calories would you say that the average woman can eat and lose weight on uh, during the day? During oh, the that's day? very difficult. I'd have to be a doctor to... Can and you I'd tell me, to... number one, the average amount a woman can eat and, and lose? Well, you have to go to your doctor, and then he gives he you, tells a, you... He tells you what to do. And number one, where, where do you have your meetings? In Atlanta, Georgia. And how many members do you... Tom Poster. Thank you, bud. Uh, have you ever lost weight, number three? Yes. What was the most you ever weighed? May I ask to be personal? Yes, over 200 pounds. Oh, my goodness. You don't look it. Number two, what was the most you ever weighed? You forgive my being personal. If you don't want to answer this. Well, it's not really fair, but I weighed 175. 275, beg your pardon. Oh, my dear. Oh, my. What was the most you ever weighed, number one? About 170. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, that's marvelous. Number two, there's a famous uh, university that, that specializes in diet. In, uh, do you know where that is? The University of Wisconsin. Thank you. And that's all the time we had, so carve out your pounds on your ballots now, if you will, please, panel. Calories to the contrary notwithstanding, mark them now, at once without change and no consultation. As you vote for number one, number two, or number three. All <laughs> balloting over everybody but Peggy. All right, there we go. Tom, for whom did you mark your ballot this time? I voted for number three. I, uh, I thought number. I thought I heard number one say that they had meetings every night, and I quickly glanced at the at the little uh, affidavit and it says once a week. So I thought, well, and then uh, number two was was a little off and on with the answers. So I voted for number three. She's Peggy. a cutie pie anyway. <laughs> I voted for number three because she said immediately go is you know to go to the doctor, and which is the right kind of advice, and I feel that that means that she would be the president, and she's awful cute. <laughs> Amen. I think they're all cute, but I voted for number three because right. number one was a little hesitant about the meeting place. Uh, number two m mentioned a fantastic average because I worked out the average here as being seven pounds rather than 75. Maybe my mathematics are wrong, so number three. And Kitty. I voted for number three. Well, the reason is number two made a mistake of 100 pounds in how much she'd lost. She first said 100, and I don't think any woman who weighed 275 pounds could ever make a mistake about that. And number three looks like the kind of woman who's so darling that if she snatched a piece of pie out of my hand, I wouldn't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we have it now. The moment of truth is upon us. Let's see how much weight we lose or gain since this unanimous thing here. Let's see what we do as we learn which of these ladies actually is the lady who founded and is the president of Tops. Will the real Esther Mance please stand up? She should get an actor's card after the way they milked that one. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Blanche Wadsworth and I'm business manager for Nugget Magazine. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Dorothy Williams and I sell advertising for the Yellow Pages. While in checking the score, we find I'm afraid we had a real smart panel this time. And in that case, of course, since there were no incorrect votes, from Anderson comes your way, $150, and our warm and, and sincere thanks for being with us. Hope you enjoyed it. Also, there will be a gift package of the fine products from the makers of Anderson on your way out. Thank you, ladies. Good night, and God bless you. That's all we have time for tonight. Thank you, panel, for a great show. Good, Good night, night. Good night to all of you, and don't forget to join us the same time next week, and I'll see you tomorrow on the daytime show. In the meantime, this is Bud Collier saying good night from Anderson and reminding you to tell the truth. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Miss Carlisle's gown by Gothe.
Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Sleepy's, the non-narcotic sleeping tablet for a good night's sleep. Sleepy's. Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, this program is pre-recorded.